Wine lovers, you ask, so we answer. For so long, I've been talking about the glories of white wine and cheese, but a lot of you have come back and said, Aaron, it's now fall, I wanna get cozy. What do we do about red wine and cheese? So okay, I hear you. I've got some great red wine picks for all of your fall cheese boards, but not only that, today I'm showing you how to style it with the simple sophistication of the French for stress-free entertaining. Hi wine lovers, I'm Erin, the founder and chief sommelier here at The Wine Sisters. Welcome to our YouTube channel. This is the place where every week we show you how to eat, drink, and entertain like a pro. Today we are talking about wine and cheese fall style. The days are getting shorter, the wind a little bit chillier, the sweaters a bit thicker. So now it's time to get cozy with some beautiful rich cheeses and some gorgeous red wines. I've picked out four awesome red wines for you to try with your cheese boards today. But first I'm gonna show you how to style a fall appropriate cheese board. So let me show you how we're gonna do it. Now you might remember in this video back in the spring where we were talking about how to style a wine and cheese for the warm weather. That's where we concentrated on runny cheeses and creamy cheeses and milky cheeses. And now, much like you might expect, we're flipping that on its head. We're using a whole lot of cheeses that are coming in this autumnal tone of oranges and browns and even some orangey yellow golden hues. So what I also heard from you is that when we've done these other cheese boards, you might remember this one right here that we did with Kyle, there was a sort of sense of overwhelm where it looks beautiful for Instagram, but is it something that you feel confident executing? So I thought for today's cheese board, I'd take a page from the French and they're known for simple and stylish and sophisticated sophisticated entertaining that doesn't go really overboard, but they let the beauty of the cheese speak for itself. So I'm gonna show you what we're going to do. I think wood is a really nice option for fall. It has that cozy rusticity, which underscores the tone that we're going for. So I'm just gonna go with my good old fashioned cutting board. And let me just move my wines off to the side. We'll get to that in just one quick second. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to do it. I mean, it's almost embarrassing to do a video on it, but not quite. All right, so what I've chosen for my board is I've got Mimolette. This is a French cheese, it's a cow's milk cheese. Actually, all of these are cow's milk cheeses. And instead of going and mixing and matching the milks or mixing and matching uh, the places, what I've done is I've concentrated on the colors to really pop up that orange and that brown. So I'm gonna use Mimolette. This is gorgeous with that rustic rind and the crumbly hard center of the Mimolette. I also have this one. This one's actually so crumbly that it's starting to fall apart already, so I better get it on my cheese board fast. Uh, this is called Red Fox. It's related to Red Leicester. So it's a type of cheddar from England. And again, like we said, the cow's milk, but that beautiful pop of orange. For a little bit of a difference, I'm also going with this. This is another cheddar, but look how gorgeous. Yes, it's the Guinness Lace Cheddar from Ireland, and it really is stunning. Now, this is a really malty cheese. It has a really beautiful, well, Guinness beer-like quality to it, but it's kind of smoky and deep and, and really mellow, and it's really quite pretty, but it's that visual interest that really makes it pop on this board as well. And then finally, I also have Savagine. This is a cheese from Quebec. It's a cow's milk cheese that's sort of like a brie. The rind is definitely edible. You've got those nice striations between the orange and the white. And as it warms up to room temperature, it gets a little bit more oozy and a little bit more soft and it's brilliant for baguette. Now, when I was in France last, and really every time you are in France, no matter where you are in France, of course, cheese boards are the way to entertain. They're de rigueur. But the French never go crazy piling it high with all kinds of sauces and jams and jellies and honeys and nuts and fruits and this and that. The French really let the cheese speak for itself. In fact, they don't even cut the cheese because they don't want it to dry out. They let their guests cut off what they want. And here's a little thing that you need to know as well, is that specifically with brie, but I'm sure with other cheeses as well, is that when you have a nice point at the end with these nice runnier cheeses, you don't cut that off and take it for yourself. It's considered rude because that's considered the most flavorful part of the cheese. Who gets it? I'm not quite sure, but it's considered rude. So don't you do it. Make sure you're not the rude one at the party. Anyway, what you can do is if you do wanna have a little bit of garnish, if you just can't help yourself, and I admit I'm part of this crew as well, 
you can do a little bit of decoration. Maybe slice up some figs and put them off to the side or do what I've done. And I've just added on a few really easy muscat grapes, washed and cleaned, of course, just letting those sort of sit there very nicely. And then the ever present baguette, I'll add in a butter, uh, a bread knife so people can slice off some of the bread as they wish. Now, a couple of tips about your fall cheese board. Do make sure you bring out your cheeses at least an hour before serving. You want the cheeses to come up to room temperature so they really reveal their best selves. After that, also make sure you serve a knife per cheese. You don't want somebody swiping through the creamy savagine and then going into the harder mimolette and leaving traces of each cheese all over. Pretty soon your cheese board's gonna look really, really ugly. And my final tip, which I've always said in these other videos as well, is that if you're hosting a lot of people, maybe consider putting out or making two smaller cheese boards and replacing them halfway through, rather than putting out one big cheese board, because as it gets down to the dregs of the cheese board, it looks a little unsightly and no one wants to go in and have that. So that might be a tip for a larger party, especially if you're having an open house. So now that our cheese board is set and ready to go, let's talk about the pairings for this cheese board. The other half of the most dynamic duo of cheese and wine, we'll talk about the wine. Now I know that I've said on this channel and on our blog at thewinesisters.com that white wine is more often than not the way to go and I do believe that. Typically when you're dealing with rich and fatty cheeses, the inherent brighter acidity that comes in white wine and that upfront fruitiness that a lot of white wines have, those have a tendency to make for a better pairing. Often when we have these really bold, firm, and high tannin, high power red wines, those can really overwhelm a cheese. But if you really want to have your reds, if you make sure you stick to medium bodied or light bodied, very low tannin, and that brighter acidity and some upfront fruit, you can find some really nice pairings. So I'll show you what I have today. So I'm going to start with a Chianti Classico, one of my favorite uh, areas to go to, Chianti Classico. This is made, of course, with the Sangiovese grape. And while I do find that with Sangiovese, and Chiantes in general, they can come firmer and they can come fruitier. So you do have to know the producer a little bit. I find that when you find a great producer like this one, this one's from Il Molino di Grace. This one is medium bodied, it's fruity, it has lots of like great, tart, fresh red fruit. Tannins are present, but they're very fine. So I think that this is gonna go really nicely with some of these more pungent, saltier, richer cheeses that we have on our board today. The next wine that I've picked for you is a Lambrusco. And this is one that's coming back in fashion. Lambrusco is from Italy and it is a sparkling red wine. And it does come in a range of styles from very dry to off dry and sweet. This one happens to be a bit more dry, but there's a beautiful, fruitiness in the dry ones. For a while it fell out of fashion. There weren't some really great examples happening here in Ontario, but now we've got really interesting producers coming up with some really compelling wines of interest and depth. But the point is, is that they're fruity, they're fresh, that effervescence of the sparkling wine really goes nicely with all of these cheeses. I think you're gonna find this a really, really interesting pairing and a delicious one, which is the most important thing as well. Next, let's uh, head over to France, shall we? This is a Bordeaux Superior from 2018. Nice little vintage happening right there. So Bordeaux Superior, uh, this is actually, you know, just on the periphery of Bordeaux, and you get some really terrific deals, especially in top-notch vintages. But once again, this one isn't powerful. It's not a blockbuster. This one is a little bit more medium bodied, a little bit more fruity. There's a little bit more gentleness to this wine. So it's going to go quite nicely with a lot of your cheeses as well. So I'm going to put that there. And last but not least, we're doing something a little bit more light bodied. This is a Pinot Noir. You knew I couldn't get away without talking about Pinot Noir. So this is a Pinot Noir from my home province of Ontario. This is Jackson Triggs Pinot Noir. It's coming out of the Niagara Peninsula. And so these wines, of course, Pinot Noirs, they've got that really ethereal quality where they're a little bit earthy. They've got upfront red cherry and red raspberry, but the tannins are a little bit tamer. And again, you've got that juicy red fruit to really help with that richness and that fattiness of the cheese. So it's gonna go quite nicely and make for a really nice option. So I hope this really served you well. Today we've covered how to make a glorious cheese board all in, with your fall themes in the simple style of the French and also pair delicious red wines. I hope you found some value in this. If you did, please share this video with your friends and family, anyone who loves wine, because we do love to get the good word of wine and how to entertain in style out to everyone we possibly can. And while you're in the sharing mood, 
maybe what you want to do is give us a little thumbs up, maybe even hit subscribe so you can be alerted when we drop a new video every single week. And if you have any questions about how to pair wine and food, wine and cheese, what wines to drink this fall, we love getting the conversation going. So leave it in the comments below and I promise I'll get back to you as soon as I see it. Well, that takes care of everything for now, friends. Until next week, stay well, drink better. Thank you.